God is in control. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Any. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the day, Mary. The Lord has made yeah. it. Hallelujah. Yeah. I love you. Amen. Too. Amen. Will you give us I will speak a Mary. Will you? Yes, so will you? I'm good. Thank you, Samantha. Yeah, will you, um, Victoria, give us some short, um, uh, wonderful wow. shots into our immune system uh, by reading uh, some of the <laughs> scriptures to us, like, um, <laughs> like first, first, um, is it Jeremiah? I would, I would yeah, love to. Any other one that okay. fits something to our system? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Here we go. Vivian. Jim. Good morning. Hi, Vivian. Good morning. Hi, Samantha and Kai. Hi, Good morning, Jim. Good morning, everyone. We love you. We love you, too. <laughs> I'm going to read a scripture, Vivian. Um, I was asked to. It was a request from Mary. Here we go. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build Mm -hmm. and to plant. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Everybody be quiet. Welcome to service. We are going to ask Vivian, you are to pray a prayer of thanksgiving and then a prayer of confession of sins on behalf of everyone and on behalf of this world. Go ahead. Father, we want to thank you for who you are. We thank you for all you do for us. We thank you, God, for being God over our lives. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do in the future, what you have begun. We thank you for all the good things you've started in our lives. And, Father, right now, we confess our sins. I stand in the gap for... Not only me, the mission, the bishop, the partners, but everyone in the world. We ask your forgiveness for our sins in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for remitting our sins right now and putting on on the path called straight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 To sing for us very briefly. Bisha, we didn't hear you. Anne. Yes, Anne. Yes. Choose, you are choosing. Choose and, and sing for us. Okay. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none, there is none beside thee. There any rock 
like our God, there is none holy as the Lord. There is none, there is none holy as the Lord. There Everybody is none, not there is none Everybody beneath thee, neither in, neither in the any there is none holy as the Lord. There is none. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where is Rosalyn? Hallelujah. I'm here. I want you to sing for us. We are listening. Choose any song. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation storage and free. Thank you, Lord, in my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Oh. You, those of doing worship, you are doing it. There is over to the person that is presiding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greetings, yeah. Greetings to all of you um, in the name of the Lord the Father, in the name of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, everyone here and around the world. Um, my name is Mary, and presiding over uh, this service uh, today. I want to give a shout out to all our generous givers, our generous partners who are around the world and who are here who constantly give to make this service possible. God bless you over and over. I want to rem remind those who haven't given their offering or their tithes. I want to remind you so that you send them. I also want to appeal to everyone around the world to join in giving to our mission so that the wonderful work that our mission is doing will get to everyone around the world. I want to remind you again of uh, July. 29th, which is Friday, um, our celebration that is coming on. It's a very big, huge celebration. The best day of our bishop and that of uh, the anniversary of our bishop. This is huge. Please, send your gift and your checks or your money order. Send them through our PO box 
if you want to run your your um, card, the ver- the very person to call is uh, Victoria. Please, I we are looking up to you uh, to give your gift to our bishop. Your gift must run from hand from thousand to one million. And I'm saying somebody is yeah. laughing. Yeah, because we have reached that stage whereby we don't deal with hundred dollars anymore. You know it. We are we have risen God has lifted us up to the level whereby we can do this. We can do this. So we are expecting you to actually give from thousand to one million. And I'm telling you your blessing will be will be humongous. Will be so huge and big. Because you are not giving to just ordinary person. You are giving it to Jesus said when you give a cup, a cup of water, if he release blessing on a cup of water, just imagine huge money you, you, you count or you write down and, 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 and mail it to our bishop. Your blessing will be huge. And I know that for a fact. So and, and this will also show your kind of love that you have for our bishop. If you really love him, you know the great work he is doing, please. Thousand and above to one million should not be so much a struggle for you. And um I want to say this before I hand over to Victoria. Uh, before we, we continue our service. Uh, we have, we are going to have a summer break. And I'm speaking on behalf of Bishop. We are going to have summer break after this service. We will, we will uh, be coming in September, the first week in September, which is, um, which is the first week in September, which is Friday. And Victoria will give you detail. Now, um, what I am appealing with you is that this is the time. We know this is not the first time we are doing it. Every year, they shall give us uh, a break so that we go back, sit down, and go into all the teachings that he has given us to, to really fill yourself up with so much and do so much. Bible says that to him that many is given to him that lot is given the same lot is going to be demanded of you don't joke with the things that we are doing here it's it's a serious thing with god so as you are going for break you are going for this summer break go out and look up to uh, focusing on your business and making more money improving your life improving your product and services and giving, giving to the Lord, because God is going to look up onto your your giving, how much you love Him, and your tithes and your offerings are not going on summer break. They don't go on summer break. Your tithes, God did not give anybody um, go ahead to make your your tithes go on break. We go on break so that we can relax and go into fetching more ideas and making um, the, our work more easier and more effective. And you know Bishop is going to do a lot. There's so much work for him to do. And at this time, you don't have to call him because uh, he, has, he has a lot to do. And then he, also command, he is also commanded to rest. So if you need anything, Victoria, you know Victoria's number. Victoria is going to talk, and she's going to give you more detail. And you have to call Victoria. Whatever you need will be in the hands of Victoria, and then Victoria will forward it up. If you need to talk to Vivian or to myself, all is on Victoria. So please, we want you to make very good use of this summer and and Jesus Christ, as we are saying this, I always tell you that the Holy Spirit always comes before us. Before we gather here, he's already here. And all that we are here, we are saying he's hearing. 
Don't be the kind that will hear and then will throw it out. Be the kind that Jesus will be a witness that, yes, you heard it and you made the word you're doing. So, Victoria. I, now, everybody, listen before Victoria continues. Fully. After watching each of you for a long time, month, we decided to put together our worship team. That worship team comprises of these people. It has Roslyn there. It has Annie. It has Vivian. Roslyn, Annie, Vivian. In each of our worship, they will be before the program, uh, before the the teaching or ministration or conference or seminar, whatever we're doing. All of you are aware that Rockland, Vivian, and Anna, they have the anointing to operate in that area. Oh, yes. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Mm-hmm. That's what we just saw this morning. Vivian started with thanksgiving, then confession of sins, and then did away with it. And then I will enter his courts with praise. With praise. So, during this summer break, those of you in the worship team are going to be sanctified and going to be consecrated into that area. Amen. So that during the worship services, you will make Hallelujah. that you have it. God is like a baby. He loves to be loved. He loves to be sent to. There is no baby that doesn't like listening to a voice of the mother or father say. It makes them really, really happy. They feel so special and sweet, which they are. And all of us, we are also babies. So while they are ministering to God in singing and worship, they are also ministering to all, to those of us who are old babies too. Because every human being is a baby from the time you are born till the time that you live yet. You're a big old baby. You never get out of it. That's just what it is. So we can be, we can tell ourselves that oh, we are not babies. We are now adults. Well, go and see the foolish things people do. Then you know whether they are babies or not. <laughs> yeah. So I want to congratulate um, Miss Roslyn. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. Do everything that voice. And uh, I'm going to begin to give you guys hymns, psalms to practice. And, um, and uh, uh, Roslyn, you have a lot, of, a lot of expertise in this area. And you've, kept it, you've been keeping it for yourself. So now it's no longer yours. We demand, we demand, we demand for what is ours. You've been keeping. Also, Annie, you are a great worship leader. You've been hiding it. I know Roslyn told you to hide it. Now, together with Roslyn, you've been exposed. You know. <laughs> <laughs> my sister, my sister. No, we have asked for our fair share. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And also, you won't believe it if Vivian starts singing, you won't even know that it is her that is singing. You won't even know. No, when Vivian starts singing, you won't. 
And it is just so amazing that the two sisters, Rosalind and Vivian, that they have a common gift, which is worship. And that tells you how far they've been with God in their life. And also with Anna, that tells you since, since she was born, she has been in that area. So three of them have been busted this morning. Mary got wow. them busted. Yep. And now <laughs> they've been... <laughs> oh, Thanks, Mary. Yep. Thank you. Yep. There's somebody else, and somebody else that is in that area. So we are also going to consecrate her into that area. And that is Emily. That is Emily. So yes. there are four you, area, Roslyn, Anne, Vivian, and Emily. Amen. They are the ones who authorize these four, these four wonderful uh, girls. Um, are authorized and they will be licensed to lead worship and to train other people in our mission on worship. They got what it takes. Wow. So can everybody please tell them congratulations and welcome them. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's all true. Thank you. 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 And there are four of them. It means, let me explain to all of you, it means if you need anything from God, from these four wonderful women, don't ask them for prayers. They do not need to pray when they are in the presence of God. They sing. When they sing, their song is a prayer. So let's say, for example, that somebody is sick in our midst. Is admitted into the hospital. All we need is for all of them or one of them to be called and into the conference line or anywhere. I will call any of them, or Mary will call, or Vivian will call, or Victoria will call them. They are not to pray, they are to start singing. When they sing and they finish singing, they have that the prayer does everything. When they finish singing, then they go. The healing happens as they sing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So many oh, of oh, we, are, we, are going, we, are, we are going in a different direction in church. Amen. People don't, they don't know why they are singing. They just sing to God and all of that. We are singing for different reasons. And for the kind of human beings, the kind of sisters we have in our midst, the kind of mothers we have, you know, Roslyn, Anne, Vivian, and Emily, when they sing, money comes. When they sing, healing comes. When they sing, they create. When they sing, devils run. They don't need even to rebuke the devil. Or... When they sing, the devil run away. That's all it is. Yes. 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 So, you guys have seen, every one of you have seen how many years it has taken us to put this together. And I want all of you, please protect Roslyn. Please protect Annie. Please protect Vivian. Please protect Emily. And for those who are the who are the the the, the presiding elders, uh, Mary. And uh, Vivian, please protect them for us. Please protect, protect them. Please do everything to make them happy. Do everything to, to keep them in your prayer. Do everything. Buy them gift if it's needed. Whenever such thing is needed, just do everything to keep them alive and to protect them. When God sees that, you will see how everything will turn around for all of us. Thank you. 
We will. Allow them, allow them to stay in their offices. They now got office. I mean, they have other things that they have to do, but this is their supernatural offices. We love it. Hmm. Vicky, go ahead. Mm. Oh. Hallelujah, we will. So Mary Amen. covered everything, but I'll go through it really quickly. Uh, we are entering into summer break. The next time we are to meet will be on Bishop's anniversary. He was ordained in 1989, by the way. So the next time we meet will be July, that's a Friday, Friday, July 29th at 7 p.m. Central. Uh, next, we will start our services again on September 2nd. That's the first week of September. September 2nd is a Friday at 7 p.m. Central. We are reminding people, um, us beautiful people who love the Lord, uh, not to be calling Bishop's cell phone, office phone, his second phone, any phone. We will honor him and respect his time. If you are needing of anything, you are to call 316-308-5645, and one of us will be connected to, and we will help with any issue that you need. And that's about it. And we are all, yeah, that's about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, be focusing. Doing. Hallelujah. We'll be focusing and and going over uh, broadcasts that we missed during this time. It's not a time just to really relax too much on our part. Even though there will be work going on behind the scene, we just won't be meeting every day like we do every week. There we go. Amen. Thank you. Vicky. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Now let us pray. <laughs> Glorious Father, thank you for another day to partake in your blessing. Love is the first sweetest fruit that you have given us. And we don't want to eat this love, your very love, without producing the same kind of love. Therefore, Lord, we ask the ability to reproduce your kind of love every day. Amen. This is my prayer. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen. 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 Please. Thank you. Please, let's open our Bibles to John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. Let us hear the word of the Lord. And I read. God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he, that gave. he gave his only begotten, begotten son, and that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. life. Hallelujah. This Hallelujah. Let's is not, I'm sorry. Someone needs to mute their phone, Mary. Excuse me. Let someone mute their phone so we can hear Mary. Thank you, Victoria. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. In this, in this passage... We see the word, for God so loved the world. He, he emphasizes, it. for God so loved the world. So is an emphasis. It's a PowerPoint showing the level God loved the world. Showing how much God is interested in the world. 
showing you that God is, has not abandoned the world. Showing you that God's eyes are focused on the world. God is interested in this very world. God loves the world and he just not love it but he so love it. So in big letters. Don't be deceived that God has abandoned the world. God loves the world. He so loved the world and every good thing that is in it. Every good thing. Because he is God of good. He's not interested in bad things. He's interested in good things that are happening in this world. I am going to turn this passage upside down. I'm going to turn it inside out. And you are going to do the same with me. Certain group of Christians have told us, and you are all witness, that we should love Jesus and hate the world. We should love Jesus and hate the world because we are not of this world. They tell us that we should separate ourselves from this world because we don't belong to this world. So, the world became rich without Christians. The world has become rich without Christians. And this world and the people of this world have become very rich. While majority of Christians are into quotes, I would say beggars. Christians are working for the people of this world. Christians are doing, are doing begging, I will put it, in people's jobs because we don't have our own. Because we neglected the world. We separated our, ourselves from the world. And therefore the world, the people who had the conscience of God, who thought in them that what is this that they are teaching us? We see in the sight or in the perspective of God, in the view of God, that we have to create. We have to be like our maker. We have to, the brain that he has put in us, we have to use it to invest things, to, to create things, to make this world look presentable and a joyable place for us to live in. So these people separated themselves and they went out, out there to do great job that you, yourself, and myself are witness. What a shame that Christians has to be beggars. That Christians, that Jesus came for, that Jesus came to reveal to us that the world belonged to us, the worlds of this world belong to us, are now working for people who are in the world. If they don't pay us, we cannot eat. That is a shame, and a shame, and it's a shame. Jesus did not say that we should abandon this world as they told us to but that we should do business in this universe. We should do business. For God so loved the world 
He so loved the world. Why is it that we are not loving this world? We are not talking about bad things. We are not talking about bad characters, bad behaviors, bad work. We are talking about genuine work. Work that profits. Work that brings people people happiness. Work that helps this place to become a better place to live. That is what we are talking about. And that is what God is interested in. And that is what Jesus was expecting or is expecting for we, his own, to do. It is we who, has, who should have taken all the businesses to do. Imagine if a child of God, a true child of God, is your president, is your um, a manager, a true child of God. What do you think will happen? When Moses was leading, what do you think it happened? God was talking to him. And the children of Israel were benefiting from God directly through Moses. If all these people were real, true children of God that God could have used, remember that Moses said, would to God that all of you were prophets. Right? So that if your manager is were to be one of the prophets. Imagine how the work, the work you, um, you are doing will prosper. Imagine how this world would have turned to be. But because Amen. Christians separated themselves from the world and do not understood the words of Jesus, for God so loved the world and explain to us vividly what that means that we should go out there and, and invent things and produce things and serve with all our heart and do great job and be the ones that are in charge of aeroplanes cars huge buildings Rapers, be in charge of hospitals. Be in charge, in charge of gas, gas stations. We are the ones that mine uh, gold and silver, and those things. We are in charge of all these things. Do you think that the world will be stealing? Do you think that thieves will 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 be so much? everywhere, bombs everywhere, if Christians were to take their position and to do the work, this work that the people of the world, we call the world, are doing, is in the hands of the children of God. There will be less stealing. There will be less bombs in the streets. There will be less homeless people in the streets. But because Amen. we gave it into the hands of people that that are doing what they they are doing, but they don't know the instructions of God, but they know in their spirit that look, the brain that God has created in us is for us to invent things. Is the reason why we are doing this? All the money is going to them. Did you hear me? All the money is going to them. You do any service because they have produced it. They exchange it with your money. They exchange it with my money. They build apartments. And you have, you have to get somewhere to lay your head, right? So you go and rent apartment and you give them the money. This should have been for children of God. This should have been for Christians. But those who led us, led us astray. They did not explain to us 
probably they do not know it themselves. So they separated children of God from the world. I am talking about things and people who are qualified for God's love. People who are doing the right thing in this life. Before we can call ourselves giants and Christians, giant Christians for God, are we ready? Are we ready to really, really give ourselves up and throw out what is in our mind? The pollution, they polluted our mind of separating ourselves from the world. Separating yourself from the world. You are still in this world. How can you separate yourself in it? If God himself so loved this world, please, God himself so loved it. He loved the good things that are happening. He loved the car that you are seeing. He loves to see you sleep in a comfortable home. He loves to see you, that you are investing something, you are, you are, you are creating something that will, will help people to live and live good. And God will be happy. He will be happy to see you do this. Brothers and sisters, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Amen. we really know, we will really know whether you are of God or you are not. Think about this. Many Christians think that they are obedient to Jesus. Little, but little do they know that they are a disappointment to heaven. They are. If you think if you really think or if you really want to know the kind of spirit you have, whether you are of God or whether you are of the devil, is by how much you love this world and how much you want to build and enjoy in this life. Look, look, it is God himself that build this planet, planet. God himself did it, not the devil. I'm saying again, it is God that built this planet. And it is God yes, himself hallelujah. that invested human beings, you and me, into this planet. It's God that did it. Yes. And it is True. never Amen. Yes, he did. Never Amen. the devil. He has not rejected this world. He loved the world, and he so loved it. And this is the amazement of it all, that God himself is a giver. He gave his son into this world, not into any other planet or galaxy. He gave his son, his beloved son, do you know how precious and valuable Jesus is? And it is in this world that people tell us that we should separate ourselves from, that God gave his son over to this world. Why? So that he can claim the sin that human beings have formed in this life. So that this life will be a better place for us to live. So that we can do more business. And you know something? God is the one who did the first business for us to see. He him giving his son up to us. It's a business. He wanted he wanted to have business to do with us. So he gave his son. And that is a big time investment that God did by giving Jesus is a 
big time investment. Please. So now, my word to you is that how much do you love this world? How much do you love the world that God has given, that Jesus himself was invested into? How much do you love this world? Do you hide your laziness in, under Christianity? Do you hide your not wanting to do anything under Christianity? No. How much do you want to make this world a beautiful place for you yourself and for the people around you to live? What kind of building do you want to build? What kind of new business businesses are you going to set up in this planet to make it beautiful? For, for me and for you to enjoy. Many people have very little expectation. They have very little expectation out of this life. And that is the reason why they don't do anything. They don't want to establish business. They don't want to do nothing. They just stay in there. They don't want to do any nice thing for the world that people will remember them forever. Do you think that those that have has made, um, uh, um, invented something like a um, computer will never be remembered? They will be remembered forever. Those who are in this world who see from the view of God and from the perspective of God are now not the children of God, but they are, they are the children of this world. They are the children of this world because we have decided to separate children of this world and children of God. And remember that all that I'm saying, don't get me wrong, is not evil or bad things, bad invent investment, investing, uh, bad behaviors, bad life. That is not what I am drawing attention on. I'm drawing attention of normal good things. Normal good things. Now let us see the children of this world, what they have done. In the first place, before I go to the children of this world, what they have done, what has Christian done? What is it that you can, you can mention that this, this thing was invented by Christian? There is none. Search through and see. There is none. Are we obeying the word of God? No. But let's see those we call the children of this life what they have built. Governments of different kinds. Your eyes is seeing it, my eye is seeing it. Cars and aircraft of different kinds. You see it, I enjoy it, you enjoy it. Trains and sea craft. Ships. Ships of all kinds. Crews of all kinds. They are inventing them. Computers. Talk about cell phones of different, different kinds. Medicines, different medicines. People are busy in labs doing great things about, about medicine. How to get the right medicine in the body of human beings so human beings can stay longer. Even though God has cursed man, that man will die at the age of 80. People are trying to invent things so that man can live longer. New ideas. New ideas that will help us on this planet to make our life better. People of God. Do you know that this is where the money is? 
do you know that these people are making themselves rich? We should we should wake up. Believers, let us wake up. And let us know that being in church all the day is not what God wants. Have you forgotten Abraham? Abraham was a busy man. Making making business, building tents, working hard. He didn't even though he was a friend of God, he wasn't bowing down, praying from, from six o'clock to six o'clock. He was there in his field doing work and collecting all the money. He was rich. Isaac did the same. Jacob did the same. Where did we get this from? Whereby we have to be praying in our rooms and fold our arms and think that God is going to send angels from heaven to bring down mighty things to us. Who taught us this? There is, there is a place for prayer. We have to go back and do it as the ancient people did it. There is a time of God's visitation. There's a time, so many times, about 98 or from 95% to 98% is for us to work. And the other percentage is for God. Because God has already planted inside you and me the worship. And therefore, there is a time for it. That doesn't mean when you wake up, don't pray. You wake up, you section your life in the hands of God, and you step, you step out. As you are working, you can pray at the same time. You can, you can, you are walking at the street, you can pray at the same time. You are sitting in your car, you can pray at the same time. There is no time for you to uh, um, be, um, be in one place and be praying, wasting all the time, where the time is money. Now, these people are collecting all the money from us. God is waiting to see if you will love the world exactly as he does. He's waiting to see your product. As I'm talking to you right now, there is somebody who has a very big idea, and you don't know how to present it because you fear that you are a child of God and God hates it. Who told you? Please go out there and invent it, and that will be the genesis of your riches. Amen. Hallelujah. Now Amen. I want us to go. Amen. I want us to go ahead to pray. Now before we pray, I want to say that we are going to take, we are going to give God or ask God to give us passion, so that we can love this life because. I'm telling you, all these things that we are hearing, if we don't have the passion to love, the passion to love this life, we will go back to what we are doing again. We don't want that. We want a situation whereby we have heard the word and we are the doers of the word. Therefore, we are going to ask the Lord to give us the passion so that we can do what? we can enjoy and love this life he has given us in this world. Amen. Now, check. Start from your, your very house you are living. Are you living in a house or in an apartment? How, what kind of house are you living in? The kind of apartment you are living in. What kind of dress are you wearing? What kind of shoe? Are you wearing? What kind of food do you eat? What kind of medication do you take if you do that? If you if you have that opportunity, or if you are the kind that take medication, you have to get the best out of this life. Don't hide, and don't hide under laziness to be a Christian. Christianity is not for lazy people. Christianity is for hard workers. Christianity for those who who mean business with God and who are here to help God make this world a better place to live. 
I am, we are going to pray and we are going to ask to change our life. We have summer break. You have a lot to do with God. What have you heard that has touched your heart that you would want to change? That this summer break, you are going to work on it and that is going to make you improve and have a better life. I want you to close your eyes and talk to the Lord about what you have heard. There was a man, as you are meditating to pray your prayer, there was a man who lived near a place, a, um, a place they have dam, right? Dam, that is, um, they built a dam, a very huge dam. And this man was a Christian, and a, a time came that the government uh, said everybody should evacuate from the area because there is a mighty rain coming, and they don't know what will happen. Therefore, everyone started evacuating. This very Christian stayed at where he was. Everyone was gone. His family gone. He staying there. And people came to him. Are you not evacuating? It's going to rain. He didn't. Because God, he's a believer. And God will deliver him. Water, rain cannot do him anything. What happened? In short, even when the rain started, somebody came over to check if everybody is gone and saw this man and said, are you not going? Are you not living here? The rain has started. He still remained there because he was a believer. He's a child of God. Nothing bad can happen to him. The short story is that the rain came. Unfortunately, the dam broke down and water covered the whole area. And that man's building included destroyed. The man died. Now when he went to heaven, he was lucky he went to heaven. I said if I was standing at the gate, I would have pushed him. I would push his head to hell. <laughs> because he was a disobedient disobedient child. <laughs> but when he went to heaven, he had the audacity to ask Jesus, why did you let me die? And Jesus said, all the people that were coming to you. And no, Jesus said first that I came to tell you to leave. And he said, when did you come? I didn't see you. He said, all the people that came to you, I sent them to come and tell you to evacuate because I know this is what is going to happen. But you didn't listen. People of God, Jesus will not come to tell you that love the world. He has sent me to tell you that love the world because he so much Amen. loved the world. Amen. Listen to what I am telling you today. Hallelujah. And don't Amen. be like that man. Don't be like that man who stayed there till he died. You have a lot to offer to this world. Jesus Amen. has given you so much gifts. So much gift inside of you. Even if it's one, it will help the whole universe. Mm -hmm. Pray about it and talk to the Lord about it. That you, He should give you passion for the world, to love this world, and to and to bring out what is inside of you to help the universe and to help help all of us. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for this Lord that you have shared. Give us passion. And I thank you that Lord on my chance have been working on what you are supposed to do. And we are asking you to help us not to be busy about this for the person who to give us to help us and to have passion for what you do. Mind love. We want to have nice things like this. We want to have everybody back. Beautiful houses. We want to create it for you. We are asking. 
good for the world. I want to give that glory. I want to ask people. I want to let people know that it does. I want to give that for ourselves, our friends, and people who deserve it. I want to create something that is in this world. I want to give us our the <laughs> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glorious Amen. Father. Amen. Oh, glorious Father. By the sweet smell, smelling aroma in the blood of Jesus, we have lifted up our prayers and our requests Amen. to you. And you have heard it because that is what you told us. You have heard our prayers. We thank you so much for hearing us. And we thank you that the coming up of the the lavishing blessing will come upon us and we will see it. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Now, now, please, um, let us remember um, the gift, our gift for uh, Bishop, and also remember that even though we have uh, we have summer break, uh, we will still come on July twenty ninth, ninth, which is Friday at seven p.m. Um, Central. Now, let us receive. Um, and also, before we receive the blessing, uh, don't forget your tithings and your offerings. Um, they have not gone on summer break, please. Uh, your your tithe and your offering has to still continually come uh, to the mission. <laughs> yeah, they they don't they don't go they don't go on a summer break. It is we that go on summer break so that we can go and work more and then uh, bring more to the house of the Lord. Now let us receive the blessing. Mm. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost come upon you and dwell in you, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 God be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Mary. Enjoy the holiday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful summer break. Thank you. Be back on the twenty ninth. Bye. Amen. Bye. Awesome message. Bye bye.